So the other question would basically be, and you know, I hear you ask this question, like other people that you interview, et cetera, et cetera. And the question is basically like, what advice would you, like life advice in general, would you give your son if you only had like 10, 15 minutes left on planet earth? Yeah. So what, if I only had 10 or 15 minutes or 10 or 15 seconds? If I had 10 or 15 seconds? <laughs> minutes. Minutes, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll start with the short version. My sh I think my shortest advice would be, remember it's not the smartest or the strongest who win, it's the most adaptable. So make sure you like change. And secondly, I would say when you're trying to learn any subject, don't study anybody except the top 10 people in that field. Spend 80% of your study on the top, not the most relatable people. people. Most people study the most relatable. That'd be number two. Number three, I'd actually say listen to my 67 steps. Part of the reason I created 67 steps is so I could give it to my kids one day. So I gave 67 hours of, of my thoughts. But I would say in that one, the first 67, I put them in order of what I thought was important. So the first 67 steps is awareness. Try to be the most aware person in the room. So sometimes I will ask an entrepreneur like, how many views did your last post get? What's your chargeback rate? You know, like, what's your P&L look like? And most entrepreneurs can't answer it. They're not even aware about their own business. Then I'll ask them questions like, what truly motivates you? That's the hardest question of all. But now with science, you can actually, I can, I would try to tell my son, you got to figure out super early what motivates you. Four M's. I'd want him to know his four M's. So is he motivated by material things, by mating and love, by being the master status, or by movement? Because you should transform your entire life based on that. Because I think that's set at birth and very hard to change. I actually think that's a genetic, that's like having blue eyes. You either are born with it or not. You can't really change it except contacts temporarily. So that'd be my next thing. My fourth thing I'd tell my son is Almost nobody knows anything. So out of a thousand people, don't ask 999 of them for any advice. But when you find one person who's qualified, listen to them a lot. Don't listen equally, I guess is what I would say. Don't be a democracy with how you learn. Don't ask everybody in the room, hey everybody. But, and this is weird, if you do wanna ask the masses, ask a huge amount of them and you'll also get it. So either ask one expert or ask a hundred million humans to take a poll. Both of those will be great sources of truth. The worst is ask the 20 people who are your friends. The very low odds you'll get a good answer. The next thing I would say is think only in probabilities, not what's right or wrong. So, I mean, yes, don't kill people and stuff like that, but People say, which business should I do? I'm like, there's no right or wrong, but some will have a higher probability of success. Most humans think like little kids, they think black and white. When you're four years old, you start going, who's the bad guy? Who's the good person on the movie? But no adult should think that way. There's, when I think about Donald Trump or Joe Biden, I would tell my son, just think about the probabilities of who's right and who's corrupt because you'll never know the truth. So you have to make a guess. That's one other thing. I would say practical, focus on deep sleep cycles. Try to get enough that you get about 150 minutes of deep sleep. That one thing alone will be like 50% of your physical health. Will do. Because if you think about it logically, you'll spend about one third Nature thought sleep was so important, it was willing to waste 30% of our entire existence to be in that state. So it's obviously a crazy important state. Um, love, if I have a son, I would tell him, in general, there's two types of women in the world. There's mothers and there's mistresses. Well, there's three. Mothers mistresses and the women you don't like. The women you don't like, we don't have to talk about because they're not gonna, you're not gonna get involved with them. The dangerous one is marrying a mistress type. So 
Only have kids with the mother type. Fun you can have with the mistresses, but never kids. And never long term. Just be careful of that. Most entrepreneurs uh, mix up mothers and mistresses, and they're very different. And a lot of that's genetic too. Some women just have more of a mistress personality. And some women are just, doesn't mean even if you don't want kids, the mother type is very different. So don't be careful of the exciting woman. Charlie Munger says the most dangerous thing on earth for a man is a pretty face. <laughs> More men have made mistakes over that. Um, for happiness, I would say play the right game. Most people think one of the four pillars is the main game, like health. You see people getting super into health. They, they make health their god. That's like their whole personality is physical health. Then you meet other people, their whole personality is wealth, money. Other people, their whole personality, they say the only point in life is love and romance and family and kids. And then there's some people that, you know, yoga people, it's like it's all about being happy in the moment, aware. But the re that's all checkers. That's like a backgammon game. The real game is chess, which is how do all four of those things get balanced out in your life. So I tell my son, balance the four and you're playing the real game of being a human. I would tell them learn public speaking. It'll be one of your most powerful tools and how to write. Those two skills have changed the world more than any other two skills. To be able to speak and to be able to write. Um, and now in the modern world where people read less, I would say just learn to speak well. I would say learn how to read people and spend at least 10,000 hours of your life studying how to read people. It's that important. I'd rather have my son spend third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade only studying people as their only subject because almost all of your unhappiness in life comes from either your physical body, which we talked about earlier, nature, like hurricanes, earthquakes, which you can't really change, but mostly from people betraying you. So. Once you know how to read people, you can assess a person, a probability to every person. I have people in my life, you never know who will betray you, but I have people in my life that I think are less than 10% chance of ever betraying me, no matter what happens. I'd also say, is anybody tracking the 15 minutes so I don't go too long? I would say um, you only know who your friends are when you go through a catastrophe together. You have to go through an actual big problem that threatens to destroy you and them. And then you'll know who your true friends are. You, you can't have, I, I would also say, focus on making a lot of childhood friends because they're hard to replicate. So by the time you're 18, make sure you have eight to 12 best friends. You should not, even if you're an introvert. I would also tell my son, don't, talk, don't think of yourself as introvert, extrovert. It's been a distortion of the science. Carl Jung, who came up with the word introvert, extrovert, he did not define introvert, extrovert as being shy or being loud. That's a new way. So I would tell my son or daughter, don't hide your social anxiety by saying you're an introvert. That's an excuse. You can learn to overcome your social anxiety and you're gonna to need to be social. I would also say, be like Pablo Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. Don't be afraid to mimic very closely other people's success, it's okay. Over time, you'll make your own version of it, but at the beginning, just copy good people. I would say for physical health, focus on filling yourself up. <laughs> That's the best way to eat the best diet. So eat a ton of something that you like that's healthy for you. Don't focus on not eating other stuff. If you focus on not eating things, you'll end up eating them. But if you get so full on stuff that's good for you, like I would tell my son when you're a teenager, like a boy, like eat 10 hamburgers in a day. It's like put, not maybe you don't have two buns. That's the best way to not eat junk food. Just fill up. I would also tell my son, don't listen to people that tell you to 
waste your 20, not, not to have fun in your 20s. They're idiots, it's not logical. There's things you can only do in your 20s. I would say, Warren Buffett used to say, that's like telling people you're not gonna have sex till you're in your 60s. You're gonna postpone that pleasure. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm only gonna have sex when I'm in my 90s because it's gonna distract me from my goals. Well, you, can only, you can't do it in your 90s. Wealth, I would say, know your Myers-Briggs. I actually think Myers-Briggs personality quiz is good for knowing what you should do in your career to make money. There's 16 personality types. I'm an ENTP, which means visionary, so I'll be strong at like seeing new things before other people, but I won't be good at like HR or something like that. And then if somebody's an INFJ, they'll be good at being HR. So match up your career, not just what, in, you can go into any industry with any personality, but match up what you do in that career. So if you wanna be an entrepreneur and you come as ENTJ, you should probably be the CEO. But if you come out as INTJ, you should probably be the CTO of the, of the even if you started it. You don't have to be the CEO of your own business. That's wealth back to love. I think you should be in business with your family. I think that's a huge mistake to say you shouldn't be in business with your family. But if you happen to have an insane family, then forget what I'm saying. <laughs> or there's always, even in an insane family, there's one or two cousins that are normal. So. I like business, I th and I do think you should go in business with your friends too, your close friends. I don't agree with that. And, and all the science is on my side. The only businesses that they found that live, that last more than 100 years are family run businesses. Very few businesses can last more than a century. So there's restaurants here in France that are over 500 years old, been in the same family. So how are you gonna, you know? And then I would also tell, organize your business like you're a general in the military though. Military structure is genius and very powerful. So have sergeants in your army. If you're the general, divide it all up with colonels, sergeants, lieutenant, you know, all the way down to corporals or whatever you wanna call it. So be super organized in business. Um, Happiness is your compass for life. Like you're, you're out in the mountains and you want to know which way is north, west, south, east, you know, all this. That's what happiness does. So if you wake up unhappy a lot, then you're probably just going in the wrong direction. So try something brand new. Don't let yourself be too unhappy for too long. Also, memorize a lot of quotes and a good one is... Uh, the chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. Or as Nietzsche said, probably the most, Nietzsche is one of the smartest people, but hard to understand. But he said, basically, imagine every action you do, every business you build, every girl you go on a date with, that you would have to do it on repeat forever. Would you still do that thing? So like I think about the things that would make me happy. Like I'm happy I came here. I like to travel. I got to bring some of my family, some of my friends, Frank. So I would do this over and over and over and over again if I was stuck in a time warp like Nietzsche said. He said time innumerable. And I would be like, that was a good decision. So if you find yourself about to do something, ask yourself if it had to be on repeat. So if you go to a club, and you literally party so you puke for two, you know, and you're sick the whole next day, would you do that over and over? No. Which brings me to my next piece of advice, which would be you can do almost anything if you avoid extremes. So I would say avoid extremes. Don't be a Republican, don't be a Democrat. On some things be Republican, some things be Democrat. Don't be anti-war and don't be for war. That's, and I would tell them that's called domain specific ideals. So be domain specific. Should you go to a nightclub? Yes, if you do it like twice a month, 
and you leave a little bit earlier than everybody else. So extreme is never go to a club when you're in your 20s because you could be making money and always go to the club four days a week, party from you know, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. I would tell my son, be right in the middle. Go like twice a month, have fun, who cares? Drink a little bit. Alcohol is a good example. For me, I would tell my son, get one glass of tequila, put one ice cube in it and sip on it. One glass of tequila, you won't feel bad at all. But so drink, it's okay to drink, but don't fuck up everything else. You know, and that last one will be the hardest for any human, especially successful humans want to be extremists. If you notice, I'm just running through health, wealth, love, happiness over and over again. And, and that's, by the way, have a disciplined mind like that. Think about your life like that every day. Oh, divide up your week and focus on one of the pillars. So every Monday, I, fo I think only in my extra time. I focus on physical health. So I like listen to physical health audiobooks. I think I, I do, a, if I'm going to do a podcast that I'm going to listen to, listen to one on health. Tuesday, focus on wealth. In your extra time, listen to business books. Wednesday, love. Focus on social books, psychology, dating. And then on Thursday, do happiness. Some book on happiness. Meditate more than normal. And then on I, Friday, I switch back to health. Saturday, I do wealth. So twice a week, think about wealth a lot, super deep. Um, and then once a week, think about love and happiness. And you do twice a week health and twice a week happiness. I mean, uh, money. What's your personal biggest learning? Of what? The last, your personal biggest learning in the last, let's say, 12 or 18 months? Last 12 or 18 months? Um, try to not have too many decision makers in your life. A few is good, too many makes it too complicated. Another one, <laughs> how about this one? This is a good ending one. An old lawyer told me this from Texas. Um, beware of most advisors because they only think about you once a year and they think about themselves every day. So most of your lawyer's advice is going to be only this good. Most of your accountant's books, only this good. Not because he's a bad person, because he doesn't care that much. So when you go to an advisor, like a lawyer or accountant, don't agree with the first piece of advice they give you. Push them hard. Say, wait, I thought about that. I think your accounting was bad. I found five things wrong. Test it, push people who give you advice. Don't, even your mentors, my mentors, I'll challenge them. The good ones will be able to stand up to your challenge. Maybe the last one is watch out for, use my life compass quiz. <laughs> uh, watch out for people who have dark triad traits and high anxiety. In women, you're going to find the main thing that makes them complicated is anxiety. Women tend to have, almost all women have relatively high anxiety. Almost every single female. It's pretty insane. Dr. Buss says I've quizzed more people than any psychologist in history. So, or any one, per, I've, as a one person, I've quizzed the most people. Men are all over the place on anxiety. So men sometimes have no anxiety and they're more psychopathic, which is also problematic. So try to have people that score 50 on most of the things. Narcissist, you want somebody who's not too low, not too high. Machiavellian, not too ho high, not too low. Psychopath is the one thing you don't want very high, unless you're going to war. <laughs> then I'll tell my son, all of his security guys should score pretty high in psychopath. But learn, that goes back to reading people. That will be your biggest, if you can read people, you automatically will know how to read yourself to stay disciplined for physical health. You'll automatically know how to make money because you'll know how to make ads and products that people want to buy because you know how to read people. Your love life, friends, family, you'll have the right friends in your life and you'll get rid of the people who betray you. You'll know which family members to stay away from and which ones to spend time with. And you'll have kids with the right people. 
or person. And then if you know how to read people, your happiness will shoot through the roof because you can read yourself. That's the end of the 15 minutes, and now <laughs> I will answer a few questions.